Hey, what's up guys? So, um, in this video, I'm gonna um, do a review of the Daho uh, Vibe D7. And um, so, as I mentioned earlier in my other videos, I have just recently moved to New Jersey area and uh, the public transit, I absolutely hate public transit, so I bought this football bike and uh, basically what I'm doing is I drive my car to close to my work and then I ride the bike all the way to the work. So that way I avoid public transit and I also get a good workout on the bicycle. So I actually looked at a lot of football bikes before I made a decision on getting the Dahong Vibe and uh, the reason being this bike is uh, super super affordable so $400 I got it uh, on sale and I think the usual price or MSRP is around $470 but you can usually get those on sale for about $400 and uh, why it's called D7 is because it's got a 7-speed cassette uh, Shimano 7-speed cassette and uh, I can't exactly remember the gearing, um, but I'll post it uh, later when I find out about the specs. And also a Shimano derailleur. I mean, uh, granted those are all actually kind of low-end Shimano um, components, but uh, regardless, it's Shimano. So in terms of durability, they should last you a pretty good time, or a, they should last you quite a long time during regular use if you don't abuse them. And in the front, I think this is also a Shimano uh, crankset, but I'm not entirely sure. So, um, and the the gearing again, I have to go find out. Probably fifty something. And uh, so next, I'm just gonna go over uh, the specific or some features of the bike, and then uh, I have to do a folding test later because um, I don't really have a tripod to put the phone down and uh, show you guys how to fold it but it's extremely extremely easy to fold this bike so um, the shifter is a twist shifter this is also Shimano uh, Rivo I think it's called a Rivo shift uh, use Shimano's SIS index uh, shifts uh, shifts pretty good uh, you know not super crisp but pretty good and the brake lever is you know aftermarket brake lever no brand same with the brakes the v brakes not v brakes but those um those caliber brakes um they work okay and actually when you first buy the bike the the brakes actually kind of stick to the uh, the wheel so you most definitely need to have some basic tools for the bicycle uh, in order to do some basic adjustments on the brakes as well as the wheels when the wheel first got to me it was over tightened and it's really really hard to spin I have to find um, a wrench to loosen the rear wheel right here those uh, those bolts and then loosen the uh, the bolts from the other side uh, in order to get the rear wheel starts to spin normally so the bike most definitely doesn't come you know ready to ride you need to do some minor adjustments and interestingly the very first day i was riding this bike it was uh, pouring rain The bike actually endured the first of its you know tough test because now after the rain I look at the bike and I can see some spots where it's really really prone to rust for example like in here I can see some of little bit of the rust and most uh, most specifically over here you can see the rust from the rain all the water left in the bolts for the um, for the kickstand and uh, so the wheel is 20 inch um, most people are wondering, you know, 20 inch wheel it sounds pretty small. Does it go fast? The answer is yes, it, it goes decently fast. So when I'm doing the normal ride, it usually um, goes about uh, if you're on the, you know, the, the highest gear, it goes about 
10 to 12 miles per hour and that's probably the comfortable fast speed that you can go um, it's it's also pretty good for climbing actually so I parked the I parked my car at Fort Lee uh, as you know Fort Lee is actually on a hill so uh, when I go back from the work and I ride over the George Washington Bridge uh, there is actually a big rep um, that I have to uh, climb up before I get to the garage and the bike actually climbs pretty good on the on the high on the lower gears um, so if you're thinking if seven speed is enough for city riding most definitely it is enough uh, however this uh, this is a smaller hill and I've been to San Francisco and I don't think the seven gear is enough for the San Francisco's uh, hill climbing and for that you probably most definitely need to have some other bike that have a much much lower gear to climb those really really steep uh, streets but um, the bike itself um, so it came with a a rack on the back I actually removed the rack because I don't I don't really I just wear my backpack so there's no need for rack and it actually looks much much cleaner this way and uh, also comes with very useful um, I forgot how to call those very useful mud guard so in the pouring rain there's not a single drop of the mud and the dirt uh, on my cloth because the mud guard actually did its job exceptionally well so if you ride in the rain a lot most definitely you want to have the mud guard if you bought a bike that doesn't have a mud guard get a mud guard all right so it was uh, way too cold to do the folding and unfolding action outside and uh, as i said earlier in the video i was actually holding the camera and i can't really do it with just one hand because the folding and unfolding have to be done with two hands okay so now i actually uh, pull the bike back at home and uh, I'm going to just demonstrate to you guys how to unfold the bike first and then how to fold it back. As you can see, super, super space saving. I have a very tiny table and actually the bike fits under the tiny table just fine. I don't usually put it there, but I want to show you guys how compact it is uh, when you just store it somewhere in your very space constrained space or rooms. Okay, so next let me take it out. So the bike is actually in fully folded position. So this is the position that you usually grab it and just move it around. Um, it's about 26 pounds, so actually pretty heavy. Um, it's best not to carry it for longer than maybe 30 seconds to a minute at a time because again, 26 pounds doesn't sound a lot, but it's actually very heavy. So a trick I found actually is if you just um, want to move the bike around, you can probably have the seat just be a little bit higher. And then you can just do this. So you can use the front wheel to actually roll the bike around. And that way it's, uh, it's actually uh, much, much easier to transport. You just grab the bike over here on the seat post and then you just roll it around with the front wheel. That's the best way because front wheel doesn't really get into contact with anything and you can probably still just leave it somewhere but then when you actually put it down you need to make sure that the seat post is going all the way down so it has some support when you put the bike down okay that's the only downside but if for long-term transport this is the best way to actually just roll it okay so again i'm going to put it back to the original folding position which have this all the way down as you can see the seat post the bottom of the seat post is actually used to make sure the bike doesn't fall down okay so this is fully folded and i'm going to fold it back up and so first thing first is actually get this out it's a very strong magnet so when you get the magnet snapped you go to the front and make sure this is clicked in all the way and put down the safety pin so it doesn't unfold by accident so safety pin always you have to lock it over there okay so second step is pull up the handlebar and handlebar just flips onto the top and uh, again it's a quick release so find the quick release over here and then just put it there to lock the quick release next step is
So obviously it's uh it's too tall for the camera. So I'm gonna show you guys again how to do it. So when you put the C post back up, you want to lock this quick release tab. So that's uh that's second step, okay? So lock that and then the third step originally it's like this. You want to just pull it and then make it to the writing position and then lock it. And the angle is adjustable, so you can adjust to your liking. Um, one last thing, which is customizable, is actually the handlebar height. So the highest point is the red dot, when the red dot is actually showing, right? And also that's the best folding position. So you want when you fold, you want to see the red dot over here. Um, and that's the best place to fold the bike into carrying position, okay? So I'm just gonna leave it there. And of course, seat is also fully adjustable. So depending on your height, you can have to go pretty low, uh, pretty tall, but this is too tall for me. So I usually just leave it slightly below my waist and then I just lock it up. And the bike is almost ready to go, okay? So door pedal, you can fold it out. And usually you just need to fold one pedal, which is the left pedal, but otherwise the bike is ready to ride. Okay. And as you can see, I'm doing this at a very constrained space. So the bike, even fully expanded, it's very space saving. Okay. So that's why the reason I, I really love this foldable bike concept. I have always been riding road bikes, mountain bikes uh, for a long, long time. And the first time I got a folding bike, I <laughs> actually, to be honest, I was more excited than I, I got my mountain bike or more excited than when I got my road bike because they are all designed for very specific purpose and this bike can actually just do it all in a city and super easy to carry on, okay? So the very last step I want to show you guys is again how to properly fold this bike and uh, I was not able to do it outside but now it's here in my little temporary Airbnb space I'm just going to show you guys super super quick and easy okay so you can probably just time it and see usually how long it takes for me to actually fold the bike for transport especially when i need to catch a bus i ride my bike over there to the bus station and the bus is usually there waiting and i need to do it really quick so let's see how it let's see how it does okay so first step make sure this is slightly up and second step is Make sure the red point is showing. If you adjust, if you adjusted the handlebar height, make sure the red point is showing just a little bit. Third step, unfold. And when you fold it, you need to press this little button a little bit for it to go all the way in. And next step, fold the um, the pedal on this side. And another step is lower the bike seat not all the way down but slightly almost all the way down and the very last step is just release the safety pin and fold it and make sure the pedal is in a position somewhere here all right and let's see and boom that's it so it's fully folded <laughs> it's super super easy like if you haven't had a folding bike before um, it might seem pretty awkward, but once you do it three, four times, so again, as I said, once you do it three, four times, it really becomes second nature to fold and unfold the bike. So as you can see how fast I do it, like without even thinking about how to do it. Um, and I only had the bike for about a week. Okay. So just quickly, I'm going to just fully folded, I mean, fully expanded for you again. And this is just so easy to do, super, super easy to do. And now it's uh, ready to ride. Um, it's that uh, easy. Um, really not much to it and again this is fully foldable for even more compactness but usually I leave this side out 
and of course the left side the photo and then you just get on the bike and go okay so that, that's pretty much it um really great value for the dahon vibe p7 seven speed very very useful actually very very useful range for city riding and even if you're going like up to a fairly steep ramp it's uh it's still it still have enough gears to go up okay um something i'm considering upgrading is probably the brake sets i'm probably gonna get a avid single digit five um, levers and a brake to replace those brakes and also the the um the unfortunately the, the hubs are not quick release so that's another upgrade that i'm thinking about doing but other than that and maybe the seat um i have a brox on my mountain bike maybe i'll just take that seat off and put it on here but the downside with brox is if it rings um the seat is going to get ruined so this seat not very comfortable but uh, enough for probably five to six miles of riding without your butt getting hurt so a uh, decent seat um anyway that's it um, thank you so much guys for watching this video so if you have any questions about this bike in general uh, feel free to just ask me in the comment section down below and i'd be happy to answer for you guys okay thank you and uh, take care